From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. From the London Telegraph newspaper. I don't know if I'm surprised or not. Scientists found that men were able to spot a cheating heart in more than 9 out of 10 cases. They were also more likely to catch out their partner's lies than women. That's an interesting phrase. Catch out their partner's lies. You know this was not written by an American. (laughs) However, the... Study also found that men's suspicious minds made them more likely to suspect infidelity, even where there was none. That's okay with me. Better safe than sorry. Paul Andrews from Virginia Commonwealth University in Virginia, amazingly enough, carried out the research. We had to go to England to get the results says here, he said, 80% of women's inferences about fidelity or infidelity were correct. But men were even better. Accurate 94% of the time. Wow. Is that because of Spectre Pro? (laughs) Another software, another gadgets, I don't know. He said, men have far more at stake when a female partner is unfaithful. A man may himself lose the opportunity to reproduce and find himself investing his resources in raising the offspring of another man. Hey, 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 you are right. The study tested fidelity among 203 young couples by giving them confidential questionnaires which asked them to detail if they had ever been unfaithful. And if they had ever suspected or discovered that their partner had strayed. The findings, highlighted by New Scientist magazine, show that 29% of men admitted they had cheated, compared to 18.5% of women. While the men were better at judging a partner's fidelity, they were also more adept at catching them out. There it is again. In total, the men detected 75% of the reported infidelities, while just 41% of women uncovered that their partner had been unfaithful. However, the researchers believe that faced with heightened suspicions, women have evolved to become better at hiding their indiscretions than men. (laughs) Really? Says your analysis of the results suggests an extra 10% of the women in the study had cheated on their partners in addition to the 18.5% who admitted to it. By contrast, the men had been honest about their cheating, the figures suggest, because we cheat. Come on, we're dogs. (laughs) We are. Says here David Buss from the University of Texas at Austin said that the study added to the evidence that men have evolved defenses to detect their partner's cheating, which, quote, leads men to err on the side of caution by overestimating a partner's infidelity. So I'm looking for something out of the recent past, folks. Something out of the recent past. Have you caught someone cheating? Are you on the verge of catching someone cheating? I've got to know. Tom, Tom. Tom like it. 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show with the shortest breaks ever. That's right. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. Have you recently caught someone cheating? I want all the details, all the dirt, and on top of that, are you on the verge of catching someone? Maybe you've been compiling data. Love to know. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Megan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. 
Hi, Tom. Uh, long-time listener. Um, I was just calling because I have never caught anybody cheating, but I have cheated. And um, the reasons were not because of what I think men cheat for, which is because they just like to cheat. They like doing what they do. They're, that's just what they do, whereas women do it simply for spite. And Is that so? That's what I think. Is that That's what you did? did that. No, let me understand. Tell me the yeah. story. What made you cheat? Uh, well, I mean, simple. It was like little things like my boyfriend wouldn't come over that night. And so I'd be like, oh, well, that's it. And I would go out and I would do my thing. And I my thing would just end up being that. Does that make sense? You were doing I someone just, else's thing. Yes. But, but it was simply for spite, not because I... It was just I was angry, I was bitter, and I was like, oh, well, I'll show him. Whereas I think Which goes were... against the traditional wisdom, which supposedly is that uh, women cheat because they have emotional reason. They're not getting enough uh, intimacy oh. from their boyfriend or husband. Well, I think that is an emotional reason. I wasn't doing it because I, I was needing something. I was doing it because I was emotionally retarded in some way, and I thought that that would be a way of him like getting but back did it him. fulfill your need no well no. that's my point you see what they usually say is that women fulfill their need for intimacy by finding no. it somewhere else no. you 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 <laughs> did the same thing but you did it for a different reason yes exactly and and, and here's the thing did you get any satisfaction out of it why? Well, Wait a minute. I, I, and by the way, I'm not picking on you. I'm picking on everybody who does this. Why? Um. Why did I get? I, I, I mean, why would I you get satisfaction? He doesn't know you're doing it. Oh well. Did, did, oh, I thought you meant like, did I get sexual satisfaction? No, no, any satisfaction. Oh, Tom. Yes. Yes. Um, my baby's crying. I, I'm gonna I have to that. go. Oh <laughs> Jesus. <sighs> 25 years old, already with the baby and the affairs. Where's that going? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. No, I have to ask that question. I have to ask. Like, why would you get satisfaction out of doing it? You know, I say this as a repeat offender. I cheated and cheated and cheated. And you want to know something? Going back in time, thinking about it? I cheated as a, a passive-aggressive act. I didn't want to be in the relationship. And for whatever reason, I felt like I was not able to get out. So I was the inmate rebelling. Uh, the real truth was I shouldn't be in that kind of relationship. So now it's impossible to cheat. I live alone, and if I come home late, that's the way it is. I live alone. Done. And uh, by the way, <laughs> I, I'm up to a lot less of that kind of mischief, going to great lengths to uh, cheat, great lengths to get laid. I won't say who I did this to because it would be a, a tragedy if they found out and they'd probably ruin their day, probably lose their lunch. But I once, uh, I once was going out of town on business. And I had um, a female in a relationship with me, and she insisted on coming with me out of town on business. And she came out of town on business with me, and as so often happened, she didn't really want to be out of town on business with me. She just wanted to be there to keep her wary eye on me. So she got there and saw me doing nothing but business. And she was bored to tears, as per usual. So finally, I had bored her to the point of her saying, well, I'm going to let you uh, do your thing here. I'm going to say goodnight. I'm going upstairs. And what she didn't know is that I had arranged a hotel room two blocks away. And so the second she went to bed, uh, I hightailed it up to the other hotel where there was booze, there were chicks. And I had a uh, male friend who uh, had uh, lined up a little party at the other hotel room. But I did that because I was resentful that I was in this relationship. And it was my own fault I was in the relationship. It was my own fault. 
It's my own fault I got into it. It was my own fault I stayed in it. And finally, uh, I'd been in the relationship long enough that uh, she didn't want to get out of the relationship, and I did. So I acted out. And I finally realized that I just shouldn't be in a relationship like that. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Uh, have you caught someone cheating recently? Or are you on the verge of catching someone uh, cheating? Do tell. Lisa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, how are you? I just caught my husband cheating this spring. You did? Yes. How did it how did it happen? Well, long story short, we married eighteen years and he was married before and I was to it uh, I helped raise his children and then I have two of my own a twelve and a fourteen year old. Traveled all the time and owned his own business. His employee turned on him and called me. I had feelings, but then he you're not, you're crazy, no, no, no. And then in May, a phone call rang at 10.30 in the morning, and everything I thought was, it just matched exactly. And then when confronting him, he admitted it. Really? Yes. Well, first it was only one time, and then I said, no, 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 don't go there. But the worst was being um, a 40-year-old, 40, 40, late 40s educated man and having sex with no condom. And you found out because uh, your fufu was itchy or what? No, no. His employee called, he called me and said, we, you know, this is what's happening. He's living a double life. And I'm at home taking the kids to squash lessons, tennis lessons, piano lessons, mainline mom, just doing everything. We're from the Northeast. And here I find he's had a double life. You said you're from the Northeast? Min no. Minute and 19 seconds. I don't know. What did you say? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I just, I, I'm still with them. We're, we're trying to work it out. Like, one never knows what goes on. Well, that's true. Now, did he ever, in therapy or anywhere else, tell you what he did and why he did it? No. I went to therapy, but he refused to go. And that, now we're at the point where it's, oh, it's over with, and move on. Move on, Doc. Like, move on. And my children are very angry. My kids are not past it. And uh, it's very dysfunctional. Just, like, move on. So you told your kids about it? Yes. What did they say? Well, my daughter was very angry. My son, of course, is, uh, was as 12, so he was crying and upset. But um, she's very angry because he said, well, this is between your mother and I. And she said, no, you're the first person I ever trust in my life. And you're setting me up for not trusting anyone. Wow. All right, Lisa, thank you for that story. I appreciate it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Janet on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Well, I've been cheated on before, and I've cheated on a spouse. Well, not a spouse, but like a partner before. And earlier, one of the ladies was saying, like, it's in spite. But I don't necessarily think it's in spite. I just think it's like, you know, like, if the guy isn't satisfying you in a certain way, you try to look for it in other places. Does that make sense? Nah, explain more. I don't really understand. Well, like sexually, you know, like um, if he isn't satisfying you, you want to go and find it somewhere else and see if you could get that emotional attachment with someone else. So um, <laughs> what is the point of being with one person and having an emotional attachment with another? Well, I don't know. It's kind of like it's like a like a backup in a way. It's like that's I why I don't understand it, because that indicates to me that you always have to be in a relationship. It feels it feels good to be in a relationship. Of course, like he ended up finding out that I cheated on him, but in a, in a way, it just worked out, you know, because he cheated on me too. Well, I, I see here on the screen you're 20 years old. I always say that's too young to be in a serious relationship, anyway. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't understand why people keep doing that. It, it doesn't work. Well, it's like if if you go around and just sleep around with a, like a lot of different people, it doesn't make me feel good. I know that. But you you are doing that, except what you're doing is you are pretending that you have some kind of emotional attachment that you really don't completely understand. In this case, you were with someone you hardly knew. Yeah. But well, you made yourself feel better about having sex with them by saying you were in a relationship with him. Well, this person, this other person that I cheated on my ex with was a, someone that I knew for a really long time. So I did know that person. 
Yeah, but you if that person was so wonderful, you would have had the relationship with him. He was a loser, though. He was just like a, a loser guy. Like he didn't, So wait he didn't a minute, work. that's even worse. So you were having a relationship <laughs> with a guy you did not respect. But to feel good about having sex with him, you convinced yourself you had feelings for him, too. Yeah. But I in did. reality, you had no respect for the guy. You just told me the guy was a loser. Yeah. So you see what I'm trying to tell you, darling? Yeah, I yeah You do yeah, sleep I'll... around, but in order to make yourself feel good about it, you lie to yourself. And you say, oh, I love him, but I know I'm in love with this other guy. Okay. No, you're not. You're just sleeping around. Yeah. He ended up just, like, catching us out, like, in his part of town, you know, and that's how the whole thing happened. You were thrilled that you got caught, too. <laughs> not exactly. I felt, of course, I felt bad, but it, it was, I felt like it was going to happen eventually. You were hoping. It ended the relationship. I know that. You and the thing is, you didn't have the guts to end it yourself. You needed to get caught subconsciously. <laughs> so now, let me guess. You've got another boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. You'd like to? Uh, just a guy. Just some sort of male attention is fine for me. How about just getting laid? <laughs> I do get laid, but I like male attention just going out to dinner with a guy, you know? Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, but most of us just want to get laid, to tell you the truth. <laughs> okay. Even when we're out to dinner with you, we're thinking about having sex with you after dinner. We're not listening to you. Mm -hmm. You know how that works, right? Yeah. I listen to you all the time, Tom. I know. Well, so see that? But yeah. when, But when we're having dinner with you, we're not listening to you. Okay. We're just we're just uh, dividing our time until you take your clothes off. <laughs> You're right, Tom. You're right. Well, it was I, nice talking to you. I'm sure it was. Thank you for the call. All right. <laughs> 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Chris on the Tom Likas hey. Show. Hey. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. Nice. I did, just in a quick response to that last story, too, man. It's a, it's kind of a trend that I'm seeing that these, these people just don't want to you know, they want to get in relationships, but they don't really want to be in a relationship. So they'll they'll pretend like they're in a relationship, and then they'll just sleep around. Like, I, I don't understand that, you know. like Well, it's I, all about women still thinking that sleeping around makes them a slut. So right. they feel this obligation to call every guy they sleep with their boyfriend. Yeah. Or, or to pretend. Oh, we have deaf, we, do we have deaf people on the line? Was Whatever. That, <laughs> don't, don't try to pretend like it's a relationship, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Well, anyways, uh, on to my story. I uh, called my ex-girl cheating on me about, uh, about two years ago uh, in college. We were actually at a party, and uh, there was, and I stepped outside for a minute, walked back inside. She's up at the DJ booth, making out with the DJ. I did it for about six months. All right, this is an unlistenable connection, so uh, Dean will try to get a better connection so we can hear the whole story, because I, I can't even listen to that. Mary all the time. By the way, I said Dean would uh, get a better connection. Dean just hung up on him. <laughs> Mary on the Tom Likas show. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I, yeah, we're done with him. We're done with him. I'm okay, Mary. Hi. Yes. How are you? Oh boy, this is going to take forever. I'm doing great. I know. I'm this is like when I go to the. This is like when I go to a sporting event, and they've got one of those people singing the national anthem. Uh, recording artist, Grammy Award winning recording. We know we're going to be listening to the national anthem for an hour and a half. Uh, and that's what this call sounds like already. Go ahead, Barry. 1-800-5800-TOM. Ah! <laughs> it's Gene on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Well, my husband caught me cheating. Really? Yeah. It was really awful. I felt really bad about it. I just He was away on location a lot. And I was just really lonely. And I met this guy at work, and he was younger than me, and it was just... I don't know. I was just, it was just about the sex. <laughs> right. It was, you know, so, but I felt really bad because I didn't have a chance to tell him. You felt bad getting caught. You didn't feel bad about what you did. No, I didn't feel bad about what I did. Not at the time. I did not. Thinking about it later, I mean, it was a bad Later, thing. later after he left you, you felt bad. About <laughs> no, years later, you know, a few years later, it was like, okay, that was not something that I should have done. I should have been honest with how I was feeling. You know, I, I had a relationship with someone who I was crazy about, 
and uh, she cheated, and I found out about it, and and she lied about it, and uh, just told me that I was a controlling person, and uh, all I wanted to do was control her, and uh, uh, that I was paranoid, and all of this. I pulled all that stuff. Right, but twelve years later, she wrote me a letter, said, "Well, yeah, 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 I was cheating." He didn't believe it though. He kept on it. He hacked my computer. He, you know, found emails, found stuff. He was right. I, you know what I say about this stuff? When you get caught, why lie? Right. You should just be honest. That is Might as well. <laughs> you know, or just don't do it, or just say you're going to do it and do it. You yeah, know? I mean, uh, if, if you're not happy that your husband's out of town all the time, it's time to call an attorney. I mean, well, right. why bring soap opera and drama into your life? Well, and, you know, we had young kids, and I just didn't, you know, feel like breaking up the home. And, like I said, the guy was cute and paid me the attention that I needed, that I wasn't getting. And so uh, your husband did what after he found out and you denied it and he said he knew it had happened? Well, what happened to him? He went pretty crazy. You know, he was really upset for a while. We're still together, though. We've worked through it. <laughs> Does that mean just that uh, the two of you, like, kind of have your own space and do your own thing sometimes? Or what does that mean? Um, that means that <laughs> I'm behaving myself, and I guess he is, too. I think, honestly, the bottom line was we both really loved each other, and we realized that how it, what we were doing wasn't working at the time. So we changed some things, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I know most people, you know, give up or break up after that kind of thing. I'm, I don't know why I'm we just, didn't. I am just speculating here based on the tone of your voice. Even though you're together with him, you did it for the kids, and you're not having that much fun. <laughs> Isn't that right, darling? <sighs> That's true. And as soon as your youngest one is old enough to function on their own, you're heading for the attorney. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't want to hurt him. He's a good guy. But He's you already a, did hurt him. And I do have a lot of respect for him. He is a hard worker. He is a good guy. You know? By the way, what I find fascinating, and I'm not picking on you. There's plenty of women who've done what you've done. Um, what I find fascinating is, is women who enjoy living this wonderful lifestyle with guys who work hard. Mm -hmm. And they bring home lots of cashola because they work so hard. Right. And then these women complain about being bored because the guy's never around. Exactly. So they take time out for their manicures and pedicures and trips to Starbucks during the oh, day. Oh, I love my mani pedis and the Starbucks. Right. <laughs> and, and riding around on their Range Rovers all day long. And Oh, I'm so bored. And then they go out and have sex with someone else. God, did you peg me. <laughs> I know your type, darling. I've been your husband. <laughs> well, that means you're not a bad guy either. And it means I was a fool, and uh, unlike your husband, uh, I decided I had to live alone, and now I do. Well, that's good, and I'm glad. You know, I'm glad that you're happy. I am. I'm a lot happier this way. I'll tell you that. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom like is one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likus Show. The Tom Like a Show, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Oh baby, have you been cheated on recently? Have you been the victim? Maybe you've been a cheater. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Natalia, the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> I know I don't agree with everything you say, but most of it I do. Uh huh. Um, I was just calling because, yes, um, I've been cheated on. I just found out about it was it no Veterans Day weekend that my husband, well, who I've been with for eleven and a half years, has been cheating on me. I found it. Well, that means you've been with him since you were sixteen. Yes. <laughs> sixteen. High school sweetheart. Um, yes. now, now, by the way, what do I tell you about hooking up with somebody when you're 16 and having a serious relationship? I didn't listen to you till after, so I didn't discover your station. But I now, I now you know what I tell you about that, right? Yes. If you were a listener, you would know not to be doing that. Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, I found a number um, the end of September on his phone. The only reason why I snooped on it, 
I'm not like that. I don't think anybody should be looking at anybody's phone if you trust the person. <laughs> but you did it yourself. Yeah, no, I know. But the only reason why I did it was because I noticed that he was hiding it. And I had asked him to use the phone one day when we were driving in the car. I had to call my mom. He was like, no, use a pay phone. So I knew something right then and there. Checked it. Sure enough, there was a girl's number on there. Called her. She said, oh, he tried to hook up with me. He said he wasn't married. I'll back off. So I, of course, flipped out, you know, and then he's like, I swear I haven't been with her. Um, you know, I was like, I'm going to get a divorce. You know, we have four kids. They're all under the age of nine. And he's like, he he basically was like, I didn't do nothing. You know, I'm sorry. So like an idiot, of course, I allowed him to stay there. This fool, I checked. I checked the phone again. Graphic text messages. There must have been 45 messages that were sent in three days. He's been having sex with her for four months, okay? Uh-huh. I give the man, like I said, I listen to your show, do whatever I can to please him. You know, I go to school. I, I'm a preschool teacher. You know, I used to work graveyard eight hours and then go work a four-hour shift and go to school full-time for our family. And, you know... Now I I talk to the girl again, and sure enough, she's like, yeah, you know, he said, well, you guys aren't married, da 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 My rent, I just found out yesterday, I have three days to pay it, that he supposedly paid. The check bounced, I have three days to pay it, or I'm going to get evicted. The car payment, just got notice yesterday. Gave him the money to pay it, guess what? He didn't pay well, it. Well, he's checked out of your marriage, it's done. Yeah, exactly, and I mean, I just wish that he would have told me, you know, that he didn't, He's basically been spending the money that I've been giving him, you know, this whole time to pay bills. It's been going to motels and taking her out. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, it's really hard, like I said, have four kids under the age of nine, don't know what the hell I'm going to do, and it's just, it sucks. You know, I would have respected him more if he would have just left and not, like, dragged me through the mud, basically. Um, so. And why did you decide to start having kids at 19? You know, I know um, it's something that, you know, I chose to do. I Was that a good choice? I mean, looking back, I mean, they're my world, you know. I wouldn't change yes, it. Yes, but, but they could have been your world 10 years later. Exactly, yeah. You didn't I mean, have to have kids at 19. Yeah, and I mean, I'm paying for it now, so... And it's just un- well, the reason I'm asking you is not to give you a hard time so much as I know there are other girls who are 17 and 18 oh, yeah. thinking about being you. How no. I um, want you to tell them. No, wait until, I mean, as long as you have your career set, you're finished with school, you have your own house, and, you know, then you make that decision. How about but, you wait until you're married to have any children? Exactly. No, I mean, Wouldn't I that make sense? Yeah. And Wouldn't that be best for the kids, too? Exactly. That's why, I mean, I married the guy, and I let him back in after finding the number, thinking, I don't want my kids to grow up, you know, in a broken family. And, I mean... So now you don't care about that? Well, I mean, I have no choice. I can't make the guy change, right? Right. You can't. So, I have no he's choice. He's already... He's voted with his junk. Exactly. So, you know, just word of advice. To those girls who think it's cute, you know, they're in love. Wait till you're married. Wait till you got your house. You have everything set. By the way, dear, I got another uh, another headline for you here. Had you married him uh, back about the time you were having your first kid? Mm -hmm. Uh, He'd have to pay you alimony for the rest of your life. Yeah, but you know what? He doesn't have anything, so. Well, he'd have to earn it, and uh, he'd have to pay you. Yeah, but I mean, I like I said, I didn't want to do it like that. I never had intentions of. You know, I didn't even want to go... But you've got four kids now. Yeah, but I mean... Four! I don't know. And by the way, dear, it's it's the 21st century. Who has four kids anymore? (laughs) I know, but I grew up, you know, in a big family. Yeah, yeah, but those were the days, you know, years ago. Yeah, but I mean, you know what? They're the the reasons why I'm, you know, keeping strong right now, and it's... It's just unfortunate. Well, we'll see how strong you are. You talk about this month's rent not being paid. Exactly. Well, what about next month's rent? I don't know. I think I'm going to have to basically move out and figure something out. Um, uh, you'll have to impose on your mom or something? Oh, no. They're, 
they're pretty adamant about, you know, you made your bed and lie in it. Um, Sounds so. like you've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. I mean, I just wanted to let you know. And, yeah, right. I wish I would have found your station when I was 15. <laughs> I wish you did, too. I could have retired by now. <laughs> but, I mean, thank you. And continue to preach to everyone. And thank you. Thank you, Natalia. There she goes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Angie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, I'm Angie, and... I know. I re- I'm sorry. And I, re- I cheated on my last boyfriend, my ex-boyfriend. Your last boyfriend. How many boyfriends have you had? Um. Well, well, he was my first, and then I have one now. So your last boyfriend is your only boyfriend? Well, I have I have one now. Oh, so you have two boyfriends. You've had two. Uh huh. Why do you need a boyfriend? Um, I just like it. I mean, no, it's you really fun. don't because you have a boyfriend and then you cheat on him. Well, I cheated on him because uh, he wasn't giving me what I needed. Well, then 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 was, you don't need him as your boyfriend. Well, I needed him in the beginning, and then he changed. And no, he didn't, didn't change. You didn't know what kind of person he was. You jumped right into a relationship. Yeah. He's no different than he was when you met him. Well, he moved. That's why it became kind of long distance, and I couldn't handle it. Well, why didn't you end it at that time? Because um, we thought we could work on it. And, and what do I always tell you about that? Well, I just started listening to you like a couple months ago. There are no long distance relationships. Yeah, I believe that now. I totally believe that. <laughs> um, there well, are long yeah, distance so- friends with benefits. So yeah. when that person's in town or when you're in town, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you have sex with them. Yeah. Well, my boyfriend now, he lives really close to me, and it was just a lot more convenient. Yeah. So you're all about guys who are uh, uh, geographically desirable. Yeah. Exactly. You don't really care about love or intimacy. You just care about having a boyfriend who lives nearby. Well, love's okay, too. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Here we go. Tom Likas Show. Is that Tina Turner on Inside Edition? Oh, my. The AARP presents the next Tina Turner tour. There it is. <laughs> Unbelievable. Sponsored by Depends. <laughs> Unbelievable. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Uh, curious as to whether you've been a victim of cheating. Maybe you've been the perpetrator. Would love to know. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing okay. First time in a very long time. Great to talk to you. It is. Listen, I uh, want to tell you a, a story. Uh, I'm going out with my girlfriend for about nine and a half years now. Uh, we have a three year old together. Um, Why'd you do she, that? Uh, exactly. Although I, I do love him, of course, very much. Now, you, well, you have um, to say that. But why did you do that? Yeah, um, well, you know, it happens. No, 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 it, no, no, no. <laughs> Winning the lottery happens. Well, let, let me let me tell you, three about three years ago. We'll get to um, we'll get to your story about cheating in a moment. Okay. I'll, I I'm the host here. We okay. will slow this down. Okay. Why did you decide to do that? Shortly after the first time that she had cheated on me. I thought it was a way to keep the relationship together. Whatever made you think that? <laughs> in, in hindsight, obviously, you're the smart one, and I'm not. So Holy cow. I mean, yeah. once someone cheats on you, that's it? I, I know. I know. Done! Um, actually, actually, I didn't find out till she was about four months pregnant. Oh, so it was one of those things where about three months before... Wait, you, got, you didn't find out about the second time she cheated on no, you? No, no, no. This was the first time. About three years ago, um, she was going out doing her thing, and I thought something was weird. Um, she never really came out in the open and, and told me, and I it just had this really weird feeling that something had been going so you, on. So you lied to me when you said that the reason you had a kid was because uh, she had cheated on you. Well, no, because I had tried right after that. 
but you know what had happened is we we kept going we kept going on with it um she said well you know i i really need a baby this is why you know i i I left in the first place. I didn't at the time know that she had cheated. I, I knew that something was going on in the back of my mind, and I, I probably knew that she had cheated, but it was never actually came out, and she never really admitted to it. But, you know, when you have that sense and you kind of know what happened. So she said, well, you know, I, I left for a little bit because I didn't feel like this was going anywhere, and I feel that we've been together for six years now, and we need to have a child. So we, you know, did the thing. Then about four months later, I, I kept on her about it. And then, By the way, um, how do you know it's yours? Um, the the time frame. You uh, don't know, do you? I, I don't. The child looks just like me. Um, Doesn't mean anything. Maybe she dates guys who look like you. Yeah, and then when I right after that, when I when I found out when she was four months pregnant, I questioned you know the DNA test and said you know we need to have a DNA test, and she said well we can do that, but um, you know he's not going to be part of your life, which ah so well, that, weird. well that's well first of all that's not true, uh, because you have rights. And so if the DNA test matched up with you, of course, uh, your kid would be part of your life, whether she liked it or not. I kind of thought that I didn't really... Whether you like it or not! I kind of thought that I really didn't want to know if it wasn't mine. You didn't want to know. You know, it's one of those things... You've got, a, you so got layers. You know, you've got layers of issues. I know. I know. Um, and that's actually what had just happened three years ago. Um, now, um, in the past about a month or so... She had been going out late at night till about 12 or 1, said she was going out with these friends that I don't really know. So once again, I started pushing the issue, and, you know, I was the one who was paranoid, of course. Um, we started fighting very, very often. Um, she ended up taking the kid and leaving. And um, going back to her parents' house saying, you know, you're being really, um, you know, verbally abusive. I can't handle this fighting every day. And I said, well, look, what's going on here? You know, I'm, I'm sitting home with the kid. Um, you're gone till 12, 1 o'clock at night. You come home drunk, you come home, you know, whatever, very argumentative about where you were, and all of a sudden this is my fault. Um, so she she left. Um, I didn't see my child for a month. Um, then all of a sudden now I'm getting weird calls from, from friends of mine saying, do you know that, you know, she's been hanging out at so-and-so's house, who's an associate of mine? Why would you be surprised about that? Uh, this is what amazes me about you. Take that back. I'm not surprised. I was just kind of bewildered and kind of shocked, um, although it was something that I, once again, knew it was probably going on. And, um, you know, so I confronted her about it, and she said, no, we no, we just, you know, we, we just talk, and I text messaged him a couple times. So that's really but, weird. But, but what, why would you believe somebody who had already cheated on you? It's not that I believe, but I want to move forward. And what do you mean you want to move forward? For my son, not between oh. her and I. But it's going to keep happening. I I understand that, but the thing the thing with that now is is that her she being the mother and and us not being married is we had to go through a big court um, a big court ordeal for me to actually prove to the court that I was the legal father and have rights to my child because I guess that's how it works here. Um, so I had to do that. Like I said, I didn't see my child for a month, and now um, with oh, the court God. with the. With the court uh, still in process, I only get to see him one weekend, or actually every other weekend, which is, you know, four days a month. So that's why I want to do it, is so I can be able to see my, you know, my child. So who cares who this whore is having sex with? It's not that I care. I kind of want yes, to Yes, it is. Out there. Because you just called up here and spent six minutes of my time laying this out here. Okay, don't tell well, me do you care don't care. You do care, but why do you care? Because I really don't like being lied to, especially by friends of mine. And but do you expect? Well, the thing is, if you tell her I don't care what you do, then there's no need for her to lie to you anymore. And I haven't really said that because she left and she did her thing, and then this was, you know, she left about a month ago, oh, and now I'm starting to. God, what do you expect when somebody leaves? What do you expect them to do? I thought with a child that she would grow up. What? This has nothing to do with growing up. She doesn't live with you. She doesn't answer to you. True. True, and that's See, what no, you saying. are the one who needs to grow up. And that's what everybody's telling me, but it's hard. And I when, just you know, met you six minutes ago. It's hard when it's in your own circle of friends and you find out that, you know, your friends as well as, you know, the the, the woman is... You Get know, with our, it! Our She's going to do it again. She's probably boning somebody right now. I'm I'm sure she is, honestly. So what, why are you so clueless? Um, so close? Clueless. I'm not really clueless anymore. Yes, I, I you are. In the beginning. You still want you you still want to know where she is. You still want her to be faithful to you. This is not your girlfriend. I might be a little bit possessive, obviously. Why? She is not your girlfriend. 
I think nine years later, I'm having a rough time moving on and just getting on with it. You just said you wanted to move on. Move I want on. To. I want so to. start I now. To. Start moving on now. This woman will never do what you say. Never. I, ever. I know. Never. I know. Ever. Never. And you know what? About two months ago, she when never she started... did, and she never will. And about two months ago, do you when understand? She going out... Do you understand this? I understand. She never did what you told her to do. Ever. I, you're so right. And she never will. You are so right. You are delusional. And I knew I would be calling you in a matter of a month or two. You should have called me 10 years ago. I, You know what? I know. She was 17 when I met her. I was 26. Bad idea, but it was going well at the time. And oh. who's going to who's gonna stop that right off the bat? So that's what I get six, seven. Well, how about strapping one on, moron? <laughs> that's, that's very true. Although I did want to actually have a kid. So you um, wait until you person. wait until you are with someone who's going to be there in a family situation. Whenever I mention, whenever even you after tried to child, make her into something she wasn't. Even even after we had the child, and I mentioned that you know we were Killing a family. Me. She had always wanted to get married, and I said, "Well, we have a family," and she said, "This isn't a family. We're not married." Um, and that so really that was sense. your sign right there and that I should have been the one to pick up and leave. Right. No, no children. You let you you gave her the open door to go out and f around on you. And I was the stupid one and didn't step foot forward. And you have been the stupid one from day one. I know. The last time you did anything right, you had a hot young chick that you were boning. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and and once you started trying to make that into something more, see, I just talked about this on the air as recently as uh, this week. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you had it good. Why did you have to make it into something it wasn't? By having the child? By having the child, by, by thinking this woman's going to be monogamous with you. Well, she was for the first six years, so I, you know, that's no. what I think now. No, she hasn't. No, she hasn't. Yeah, exactly. She exactly. wasn't. She's never been monogamous with you. Exactly. And, and I'm kind of, you know, slow, well, I'm learning that very quickly. The minute here. she figured out how part A went into part B, she started screwing around. Yeah. And, and you yeah. were delusional, and you thought, oh, this is the mother of my children. Holy cow. You're making me sick. You're making me embarrassed to be a man, for Christ's sake. The Tom Likas Show.